artist friends, thank you so much for joining me today for this painting. I've gotten a lot of requests on my previous rose painting video to do a tutorial, so today I'll be walking you through this painting and I hope you'll enjoy it and that you'll join me in painting this too. So the supplies for this painting are really simple. I have with me a 14 inch by 11 inch canvas which I got from Michaels in one of those value packs. I also used Winsor & Newton water soluble oil paints which I think are really good for beginners because it's really easy to clean up and they're really easy to figure out and it's easy to blend them. I used titanium white, ivory black, cadmium red deep hue, cadmium yellow pale hue, raw umber, permanent sap green, and I later used yellow ochre. I also picked up from Michaels the Artist Loft Super Value Brush Pack, which is the 50 piece for $5, which I think is a really great deal. So I used about five different brushes from that pack. So before I show you how I drew my rose, I thought a really helpful trick slash tip for beginners is to create a grid system. So what I did was I drew a line down the middle of my canvas vertically, then horizontally, then I divided those quadrants up into four sections each. So you ultimately have 16 boxes and what you do next is you print out your rose image, full size paper, and you fold it, into, uh, you fold it four times. So you ultimately have 16 boxes that'll match up with the 16 boxes on your canvas. So you can easily go back and forth and just copy what goes in each box. So I highly recommend using the grid system because it really helps you accurately copy the image to your canvas. And today I opted out not using it because I wasn't really too worried about being able to draw the image. So here I just sped up my drawing process so it wouldn't be too boring for you. So what I did basically is I kind of drew out and outlined the basic shape of the rose and I'm now individually going in and drawing each individual petal which you can see. And what I suggest with this is that you take your time and you keep looking back and forth between your grid and the actual image and just trying to accurately match up each box and match up the curvature of each rose because every little rose petal counts and yeah. So to begin my painting, I mix the colors cadmium red for the base color. So every time I saw red in the rose, I mixed that with a little bit of cadmium yellow. So I made a reddish orangish color that I used for most of the painting. And for the highlights, I used a lot more cadmium yellow, so I'd always just pack it on. And you can't see here, but later on I added a lot more cadmium yellow to my plate. And for the shadows, I used raw umber mixed with a little bit of cadmium red, so I'd always blend those two together and blend it along with my painting to create the shadows, and sometimes I just use straight up raw umber. So I decided to zoom you in a little bit closer for this particular petal, so you can get a closer view of what I'm doing and I can explain it to you a little bit more in depth. So what I do normally for flower paintings is I paint each petal individually. So for this one, what I'm doing first is I'm taking that cadmium yellow and red, cadmium red mixture that I made earlier and I'm laying down the base color. So wherever I see the red is where I'm putting it. And as you can see, I'm also putting down a little bit more of cadmium yellow in places where it's a little bit lighter to create more depth and a highlight. So I think it's really important that you guys use a lot of different values in these flower paintings because it creates a sense of depth and it gives it a three-dimensional aspect to it. So I'm also putting in the shadows with raw umber as you can see and I'm using a tiny brush and being really delicate with this because it can get, get a little bit messy really quickly. So I'm using the corner of the brush to blend it out and 
following the curvature of the rose to create that three-dimensional aspect. So I'm curving the shadows a little bit under and over. And I'm also using other brushes, smaller brushes, to blend. And another key tip to painting flowers is you should use a clean brush to blend your colors together, otherwise they'll get kind of muddy. And it's a lot easier to use a clean brush to blend than other brushes, but sometimes I would use a red brush as well to blend all the colors together. So as you can see, I'm also going in really heavy with the raw umber to create the really strong shadows here. And I'm going in with the red brush, as you can see, and sometimes a clean brush to blend that together uh, following the curvature of the rose to create that three-dimensional aspect. So I'm, you have to be really consistent with your, when you're curving things, so you can get that sense that the rose is going up and out and under. And right now I'm adding highlights with a little bit of white and cadmium yellow because I didn't think the cadmium yellow was just enough, so I added a tiny bit of the titanium white to create those um, highlights. And I'm using, I'm doing that same back and forth technique um, with the raw umber the red and I'm just curving it back and forth and back and forth and you just have to keep blending and be patient with this in order to get your desired look and keep everything very clean and not too harsh. So I'm also adding in a few more touches of titanium white to create um, the high points of the flower. So like I did with the first rose petal, I'm going to do the same thing with the other ones one at a time. I'm going to lay down the base colors of red and then I'm going to add the highlights and the shadows wherever I see it. So for the highlights, I'm going to pack on a lot of cadmium yellow and occasionally titanium white, but I kind of want to avoid that sometimes because it makes it look very muddy and weird. So, and I also use the raw umber for the shadows and sometimes I use um, just plain raw umber without mixing anything else in it straight into my painting to create the really dark shadows. I avoided using black for the shadows because I felt like if I were to blend it in with the red and the titanium, white and yellow, sometimes it might look a little gray. So that's why I opted to use the raw umber. And I would constantly go back and forth blending and blending all the shadows together so I had no harsh lines. And I'm gonna speed up the rest of the painting process for each petal so it's not too long and boring for you.
So for the stem and leaves, I used a combination of the permanent sap green, yellow ochre, raw umber, and a little bit of titanium white. So I used the raw umber, yellow ochre, and the green together for the darkest part of the stems and I highlighted with a little bit of the titanium white and a little bit of the yellow ochre. So wherever I saw the highlights I just put in a lot of titanium white, blended it out with the clean brush and the same brush that I was using to apply the titanium white. And I also went in pretty heavy with the raw umber and permanent green to create a really strong shadow. And I wanted to create definite shadows underneath the petals so you can kind of make it seem like the petals are casting a shadow on the leaves. So for the background, I decided I wanted to make it a little dramatic, so I went along the edges and the corners of the canvas with ivory black, and I just applied that with a large brush. And after I applied the black around the canvas, I worked my way towards the center with some raw umber to give it a gradient. And after applying the raw umber, I then went in with the permanent sap green, which helped also with the gradients and I ultimately wanted to make the flower look like it was glowing so I decided to add white and yellow ochre with the sap green and put that along the edges. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I really hope it helped all of you who requested especially for me to do a rose painting tutorial and I hope you like, comment, and subscribe and keep on watching. Thanks!